The four-step method to high-performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders are both free downloads. The four-step method for high-performance trading is about de developing the mindset and the routines to increase your competence and your ability to execute your trading edge in a live trading environment. Constant progress. Seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders is an audio program download designed to help traders bulletproof their day-to-day -day habits, discipline, and develop a winning mindset. Again, the link is in the description box below. They're free downloads. Let's get started. Just reminding traders if they're new to this channel or if this is the first time you've seen this video, if you go to this playlist, everything you need is in this playlist as it is titled. We go over the templates, the timings, the levels, the behavior of price. This will help to bulletproof your understanding of the best trade setups in the playbook. Again, these are free videos on the YouTube channel to support and enhance the skills and the development of your trading prowess within the playbook itself. Everything you need is in this playlist. Hey traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're gonna to be uh, going a bit more in depth uh, regarding opening range initial balance, three day setups. But today I'm gonna to be talking specifically about closing price. Now this is something that I uh, did not include in the playbook, um, but as I have gone over in several of the videos in the playlist, uh, timings, levels, behavior of price, that the market in my world only trades from three levels and that the, the levels themselves are magnets. Uh, closing price itself is, is a fixed level. Every single trader has the information when the new day starts of yesterday's high, yesterday's low, and yesterday's closing price. And if you understand how the market uses that information, we can use that with the day count also in establishing our thesis opening range initial balance. And I want to clarify to traders that the market is continuously evolving. So you can have a three day setup that's evolving into a new setup on the same day. Uh, and the easiest way to understand that is like waves in the ocean. It never stops. It just keeps coming and keeps evolving and no wave is going to be the same as the wave before it or after it. They're unique, they're very similar, they have subtle variations, they can increase in magnitude, but it just keeps evolving and coming and rolling, which is why we can have a Friday, Monday, Tuesday for a day three trade, like we'll show on the uh, Japanese yen pairs, that evolves into a new three session setup at the end of the day three. Uh, so understanding that markets are continuously evolving, you can have a session opportunity in Asia. You can have a three session setup by the time New York rolls around on a day three. Now there's a, a lot more I could go into with regarding closing price. Today I'm going to just go over some really basic examples. I've talked about this before in other videos and, and in the playbook regarding day two. So no matter what you think the day count is, uh, in the big picture, remember I'm repeating this over and over again. Monday is day one, Tuesday's day two, Wednesday's day three. I've gone over this repeatedly in every single video. Wednesday resets and becomes day one, Thursday's day two, Friday's day three. If you find a day three opportunity on Tuesday and are trading it and are messaging me and, and saying to me, I thought it was day three, I thought it was day three. If you take a day three opportunity in Asia, by the time New York rolls it around, we could be having an initial balance reversal or continuation of an opening range breakout on a three session setup. So you have to understand that the as the sessions evolve, the opening range, the initial balance, the day is evolving and so is the larger template. Now I'm just gonna go over something uh, specifically on a couple of different pairs, uh, some instruments, just to clarify again, the simplicity of understanding some really simple concepts. Now, last week we had our first week of the new year and we had a market that proceeded to move higher right off the bat on Monday and opening range. Uh, day one runner that broke out of Friday's high, day two, day three into non-farm payrolls Friday. We had three higher closes. We had three days of breakout traders in the market. I'm not going to go into too much depth, but this is a template that you will often see on a non-farm payrolls week at the beginning of a month three higher closes or three lower closes. Uh, and again, uh, in, in the context of this video, I'm not going to go overboard into depth into this. I don't want information taken and then turned into something and being sold back to people. 
Uh, so I'm going to go over some really simple things uh, to start the process off. We start our new week, and today uh, we had Tuesday, and as several traders notice, we are on the third day from the high. Third day from the high, we had a first red day after Friday's close, closing price of the week. And that gave traders a shorting opportunity. We'll zoom in here. So Friday was first red day. And as I repeated uh, to a trader today, a down closing day on, on any template is not always a first red day. But you'll notice in this particular case, high of the week non-farm payrolls, a peak formation high first that breaks down in the third session and closes below the open. That is a textbook type of first red day. But what is important is that on the day for a first red day setup, we want a high of day, high of session, shorting opportunity. And indeed, we got that from closing price to low of day in the U.S. window. No major red news on the schedule for the first red day collapse. And as I mentioned in the playbook, a lot of traders will walk away after the first red day trade. Or if it doesn't play out or give a large move, they walk away, they forget about it, and they miss the day three either large move or blow off in the direction of the trend so we got our reversal we got day one day two there's an asia parabolic right off the bat on our tuesday and later in that session as i posted we had a short squeeze we'll go into this template in a moment uh, but i want to just uh, show traders a simple uh, understanding uh, this is a something that i will use with closing price of the week and opening range initial balance as i have talked about repeatedly and and traders have asked where to where to you know for more information where can you read that and uh, i've i've mentioned this uh, several times dalton's book mind over markets and you can read toby crable's information uh, toby crable's opening range breakouts so the easiest way to do that instead of reading the, the whole book is to uh, google his pdfs opening range opening range breakouts uh, he uses them on a shorter time frame uh, but very, very powerful, explosive opportunities for range expansion trades on opening range breakouts. Uh, Dalton market profile, uh, understanding opening range and initial balance. Now, one of the things that I will do is I will measure from closing price. Uh, in each pair, each instrument will be different in terms of how it will move. So sometimes we will see a market, as we saw the previous week, go further than 75 pips. This is a currency, and as I showed in the playbook, we'll see currencies typically, you know, the major pairs move uh, three levels of 75. Now, what that means is this. It might move 100. It might move 110, uh, but we've moved three levels, and then it's our opening range initial balance. As we're, we're going to see an example, we're either going to see, we're going to see one of three scenarios in terms of the three things that markets do. They break out, they pull back, and they reverse. They break out, they pull back, and they trend, or they all trade back and forth in a trading range. Now, as I talked about yesterday, again, that it's my objective is not to trade or figure out what a market's doing and, and trade movement. I'm looking for specific setups. And as one trader also mentioned today, I, I, I think I get it now. You're, you're just looking for patterns. Yeah, I'm looking for templates. That's all they are. It's the same templates over and over again. Dump and pump, pump and dump, or nothing at all, a garbage chart. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, I think um, overdoing a lot of false information regarding algorithms and pushes and all these things. And it's, it's levels, timings, behavior of price. It really is. It's count to three, pay attention to the clock. If I'm using one hour charts to identify the larger time frame template and I enter in on a one minute or a five minute chart, it's because it's, that move is being driven by other time frames. Now, if I'm using an hour chart, when might that trade start? Maybe the beginning of a new hour? It's that simple. People make you know big fancy one minute pushes and everything. It's like, well, hold on, what time is it? We're at the end of an hour, there's my, my trade setup. There's my entry, bang, the new hour starts. It might go for 30 to 45 minutes or it might go for one hour, two hour, three hours. So it can be that simple. But when it's glossed over with a lot of fancy stuff, to make it look impressive, it just makes traders feel like it's this elusive holy grail that if they work harder, they'll discover it. When in all reality, it can be very, very simple, especially if you're trading the same high probability templates over and over again, not trying to figure out what's the, that market, that particular market going to do today. 
It's about trading the best templates. That's my mentality. Agree, disagree. And as one trader said, regardless, I'm getting paid. And that's how I feel. So it doesn't matter to me whether somebody, you know, gets it or not. It's about uh, this making it that simple and reproducible and just sticking to those setups. So coming back to what we're talking about, uh, on the average, you know, sort of week, the currency pairs will move 75. It might move 150. If it moves 150, three levels of 50, 50, and 50, like it goes 190 pips, well, then I've had three levels of 50. My target area, that forms a box. We're outside of the box. Maybe they're working the high or working the low. Gold might do 150. It might do 300 in the week, 100, 100, and 100. Typically, we'll see a 250 pip major quarter level act as areas for highs and lows of days, day one, day two, day three. Oil, the same thing. Indexes, we can see three levels, 70, uh, 750 to 1,000 pips, especially beginning of a new month. Opening range, initial balance, and that can form our larger box. We may get three levels of 250 for a 750 pip drop, as we saw a few weeks ago. Week three, day three, three levels of rise, one, two, three, Asia, London, New York, for the reversal all the way straight down over in, I think, two hours. So it's important to understand the levels, but today we're just going to use some simple examples of how closing price can be used as a measuring area for our three levels. Now we're looking at the Japanese yen, and I've just put on here 75 pips from uh, the highest closing price of the week last week. That would give me three levels of drop. And our opening range pinned down to that level before reversing. Took out the low of Friday, but it closed in balance. So it closed back inside of the range. There is no breakout. It, it broke through the level, pulled back, and closed inside of Friday's level. So our opening range projected down to this level. Now in my mind, this is how I think. If this market is going to give me a reversal opportunity, I want to be getting filled if my target, my magnet area, and these two closing price levels from Friday and Thursday are this are very similar. I want to have that and closing price, I repeat, is a magnet level. So the Fugazi is all the other stuff when you're chasing the candles without a thesis, a bigger picture thesis, because closing price, depending on the day count, are we in breakout? Is the market now going on an expan a range expansion, a parabolic move, day one, day two, day three, three higher closes, peak formations form outside of the closing price level, right? If it's outside of closing price, it's outside of the high and low of the day. Volume gets trapped up high. There's our peak formation, our first red day. The first red day trade plays out on day two, day three, but we get a higher high. That gave Asia session traders later in the session a possible session trade back up to closing price. That higher high that I showed on our community page today is the potential for the dump and pump. Day three, the low of the day thesis being that this low now may be locked in. What do you mean by locked in? I mean that the low is locked in and if they trade back down into the low, into the low, I'm looking for a short squeeze reversal. Short squeeze reversal, three session setup on day three, page 90 in the playbook. They made a higher high, which is the on the inside. So again, if the market's going down, I'll back this up on a 50 minute chart. I, I have been asked again, um, what do you mean on the inside? Well, if the market's making lower lows and creeping down and they make a higher high on the inside on the day, what type of template do we have? Is it a well-engineered template? Well-engineered means are they specifically addressing levels and creating a template? Three sessions of rise, Asia, London, New York, for a dump. Three sessions of drop for a pump, a dump and pump template. This is a variation of a short squeeze, dump and pump, larger time frame template. And on the day itself, a dump and pump template. Now, coming back to our three levels of drop from the high closing price at the end of the week, so in this case, it's Thursday's closing price. Friday's is just slightly below Thursday's, but essentially very close to being the same. We have three levels of drop. They work it into the low. Are they working the high or are they working the low? So we have day three blow off in Asia, but we make a higher high and they're dumping it back into a low of the day that is now potentially locked in. One hour, two hours 
into the low third hour starts we have a higher high and we get our dump and pump template now if you want to count pushes this is when you count them we have our low of the day locked in new york opens first hour goes lower second hour jams back into the low and before the end of the hour they make a higher high the new hour opens and pushes into the peak formation low before engulfing at where just back this up on our 15 minute time frame three levels of drop at 75 we have a pin hammer on the 15 minute chart a triple bottom and an engulfment pin hammer at our major quarter level for a 75 pip explosive reversal trade opportunity back to closing price that's pushed higher if we back this up again on our 15 minute chart we'll put it on the one hour chart now we have potentially a first green day close first green day so we have a, a larger time frame template we have week two so we're in, still inside of the the high of week one which was a large opening range on our new year new month uh, whether this market will push higher for a reversal to the high of the year high of the month high of the week no idea but on the day itself we have a three session short squeeze parabolic reversal three levels of drop from the high closing price from the previous week everything is timed and measured and timings levels behavior of price closing price you'll notice lower closing prices but we're not going any lower they're trapping volume underneath the market trades up to closing price so Thursday's closing price still may act as a ceiling we still could see this market roll over uh, Wednesday resets tomorrow it's a day three we could see a parabolic move maybe a three session parabolic move back to the high we could see it roll over we have major red news on the calendar don't know but in terms of using closing price and measuring this is an opportunity on a market that broke higher if we just back this up again we took out the previous week's high on week one we have a market that's in breakout dump and pump potentially for a continuation or any type of pattern now we may not even get a good template that's the thing to understand you may not even get another good setup uh, in in the US window you might get one on Asia who knows you might not get any at all it may just trade now uh, but my point in addressing this today is this is a specifically measured reversal short squeeze opportunity on Tuesday day two that coincides with a larger three-day template from Friday's high of the year month week and day timings levels behavior price everything is timed and measured that is a parabolic explosive 75 pip reversal opportunity now gold was day two uh, we will just back this up to our one hour chart so we have again a market that's made lower lows week one week two has broken lower we have shorts in the market last week we had lower lows made beginning of the year beginning of the month where they broke lower week one week two broke out and pulled back inside of Friday's range and uh, as several traders noticed it was an inside day but what it did do is it moved over a hundred pips from closing price now in this particular situation closing price and uh, the low of the current date were the same the low of the day was down here but this market moved up 100 plus pips now three levels of rise on gold is not necessarily a lot uh, we could go 150 uh, the opening range essentially was three levels of rise 75 pips the initial balance when London and Europe London started trading they pushed higher they made they made higher highs and continue to go higher higher highs higher lows on an inside day template the market exploded vertically in the first hour before consolidating at the high and when the second hour opened it engulfed under our pin bullish pin hammer one two three at the high engulfment at the high of the current day now remember we're over 75 pips from closing price closing price is a magnet it's a magnet so when I say Fugazi what I'm alluding to with traders is them trading inside with no larger time frame setup you know reading price action but we're inside we haven't broken any ma major levels except that we have we have markets that have been broken out of making lower lows we have shorts in the market we've broken the previous week's low the markets proceeded up to the high of the US window which then auctioned higher three pushes into the high in the US window that's our opening range initial bounce and an engulfment and a pin hammer at the New York open you'll notice that that coincides just above 
our 75 pip space back down to closing price. If New York opens and the market's been taken three levels away from closing price, closing price traders may have bought this. Think of it this way. They've bought this. They're in the money. They're going to go back to where the market started from. It's a magnet. Three levels of rise for the New York Open. Timings, levels, behavior of price. We already have our engulfment. New York Opens. No major red news on the calendar. Why would a market pump up three levels unless it's eating into shorts from the previous day? The opening range. The collapse. Where is the money? Now, I want to clarify something here. If this market had pushed up 25 pips and was working the high and you're in a 25 to 40 pip box, that to me is high risk because you're trading in a little box where you're going to potentially be jammed in with wicks with no asymmetrical risk reward. We want to see that opening range. That's our initial, our initial range, 75 pips. They push higher in the London session, session one, session two. There's our initial balance. There's our box between closing price and the high of the day. They pop the top. Traders are getting caught chasing this long when we're inside. There is no larger time frame opportunity for a parabolic long trade, right? Working the high, working the high, working the high. The engulfment pin hammer when at New York Open for a easy low stress collapse of 75 pips back down to closing price level. Now, this to me is a beautiful chart. Uh, several traders hit this today. NASDAQ, and we'll just, we'll just back this up onto our longer time frame for one moment, our one hour chart. Week two, second week of the new month, new year. So we have a parabolic explosive move on our opening range, which was again, you'll notice, if we go back to the previous closing price of the week, we have one, two, three lower closes on non-farm payrolls and a short squeeze parabolic reversal yesterday that gave us a range expansion on our parabolic day, range expansion trade. Again, simplicity is duplicatable when it's all these other fancy algorithmic crazy stuff. It gets harder and harder and makes it seem like it's these, this elusive secret sauce society when you can make it as simple as you want. 150 pips down from the high of the day on day two. Three levels of drop. 50, 50, and 50. Then we go back. Simple process again. Opening range. Initial balance is our two sessions. There's our opening range for Asia. The market auctioned lower. Put in a low in the London window before going parabolic down into that low and jamming traders in. Higher high. Higher high at the New York Open. I'll zoom in here a bit. Five minute chart. Higher high on the New York Open and then trapping traders back, jamming them back down into the low. And at the end of the hour, the end of the hour, we get our little engulfment. First bar trades back into it. First five minutes of the new uh, third hour for the explosive reversal back up into the high of the day through closing price and high of the day. Now, simplicity, I'm just going to repeat this. What type of template do we have here? These are the same templates over and over again. Dump three sessions down for the pump. It is that simple. And these are the types of templates that we're looking for or I'm looking for. So you can, you know, go through all these crazy things or you can become a master pattern hunter and look for simple stuff. Day two, trend trade, parabolic trend trade on day two after an explosive opening range, not a pump and dump. It's an inside day, but it gave us a parabolic reversal. It's an inside day. It hasn't broken a daily level. It hasn't gone higher first, which in a lot of cases we can see a little topping pattern and then it breaks down for the dump and pump continuation. We will often see that on a day three. Day three will blow off in the direction of the trend. This is a well-engineered template, 150 pips down, timings, levels, behavior, price. The first hour takes traders into the low. New York opens, explodes, higher high, jams them back in. End of the hour, one hour, two hour, third hour, explosive reversal trade. 150 pips, three levels of 50. Now, if it had only gone 75 and we're working into the low and it still gave us that trade, then it, it may give, have given us a range expansion in the opposite direction up top going in the long direction. Uh, but in this particular case, target would have been easily the high of the day. They've probably gone uh, 50 pips above. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Now that forms not only three levels, but a fourth 100% box. 
20, 50, 50, 50, and 50. Uh, can it be that simple? Sure. Everything is timed and measured, uh, but it's the Fugazi that traders get caught up in looking at little bars and marking off levels and gaps and hunts and uh, whatever they call it, all crazy stuff. Dump and pump, pump and dump. One hour, two hours, third hour beginning, boom, explosive reversal back to the high of the day, the high of the week, the high of the year on day two, week two on the NASDAQ. And one last chart, the West Texas, um, I left the chart exactly as it was this morning. And again, uh, in this particular case, I measured up three levels, closing price, 50, 50, and 50, $1.50. I'm not going to go in too far in depth into some of the measuring opportunities for op, uh, trade setups on this. Just want to get the big picture of understanding three levels. The market had already moved. When I come to the U.S. session, it's already taken off. We're on day two. And just coming back to some simple stuff, opening range. The opening range broke down in reverse prior to our Europe-London window. It, it it reversed back inside and went parabolic. Now, uh, a lot of really good questions from traders. Um, again, oh, you're inside. It didn't take out a daily level. Look at the chart. The market closed in breakout. It closed in breakout. So it's broken out. Consolidation. Parabolic move. Breakout pullback. Who's in the market at this current time is driven by shorts. And then we go back to the process on the day. Well-engineered chart. Three levels of rise. Opening range, initial balance. Our initial balance is formed up top here. Uh, first hour of the U.S. window opens and engulfs. Now, this market fell quickly. I was a little late getting into this move. I got filled just kind of on the way down into that bar. But, but again, I was confident because the reversal was beginning and thesis was second hour now is going to collapse. Coiled sideways. And as the second hour coiled sideways. It was another opportunity to be adding in for the parabolic reversal. Now, I had a line drawn here. We had a double split when the market broke out in London. It coiled and pumped again. And that space was potentially an area for failure. So taking money. Now, when it got down here, it was 45 minutes into the second hour. 30 to 45 minutes. This is well over a dollar, by the way. As I mentioned to one trader, this is a 20 cent risk 20 cents stop this should go parabolic as i mentioned 20 cents risking 20 to target a dollar of opportunity that's a five to one risk reward opportunity now you're not going to get that on necessarily on a currency but on oil gold indexes these are the types of opportunities that when they show up they're going to happen quickly my profit targets are usually preset i had a couple more down here just in case it punched through back to closing price, but when it started to reverse at 45 minutes, lock in the money, get off the screen. Great trade. Reversal trade in a date where the market had already broke down. They've pumped it back up, got the shorts from the London window, got the breakout traders at the low of the day, got the breakout traders from the London session before coiling sideways and reversing and going sideways into the close of the day. So measuring and understanding opening range initial balance and the template and then the timings is an opportunity for parabolic free cash on a reversal trade. $1.50, three levels of rise, 50, 50, and 50. Second hour, consolidation, parabolic blow off. Third hour, trapping traders. And then the reversal at the end of our three hour window. Measuring, everything is timed and measured, closing price, Low of day, high of day, levels for parabolic trade opportunities. So we'll go more into depth in this. Uh, the other video on there's other videos on closing price in the uh, playlist. Uh, go back and study those levels, timings, behavior of price, and well-engineered templates. Have a great day, traders. One percent better every single day. Master the process. Step back. Sit on your hands and wait. Study the daily charts on the smaller time frames. I don't mean a one minute. I'm talking about 15 minute. What type of template do you have? What is the opening range and initial balance? What is the opening range and initial balance of the new week? Regardless of the day count, what is Monday, Tuesday setup? Monday's the opening range. How many levels of rise or fall? And we'll go more in depth with high and low of the week and closing prices, week one, week two, week three, as we move on through the week. Have a great day and may the markets go with you.